So what we need to do is we need some feedback from our subscribers and viewers to make sure they have a clear view. Can we, can we get that, Wesley? Yeah, the actual X3 Are they saying yes? Do we have a... No, no viewers yet. Oh, no viewers yet. Okay, mm -hmm. super. So when when we do see viewers or subscribers, just we'll, we'll ask the question, okay? <clears throat> So again, uh, we have a very pleasant gentleman here who has presented to uh, our office, Jaws Podiatry, with a chronic, uh, a case of chronic heel pain. Okay. Uh, the pain from, from the heel pain has been affecting his daily life activities. Is that safe to say? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the patient is very active nonetheless. He works. Yeah, he's got his own business. So, um, you know, clearly he, he wants to make sure he... Not only, number one, he does his uh, work correctly, but also gets rid of this problem so he can continue to do what he does best. So, uh, you know, because of, because of the fact that it's a chronic condition, I recommended that we, that we pursue uh, uh, not the trifecta, but the bifecta, right? The bifecta, which, which is the percutaneous microtenotomy, also known as the, the dry needling procedure and also the PRP injection, platelet-rich plasma injection, to continue our efforts to maximize improvement and minimize any long-term complications. We did not do the trifecta, right? The one that we're missing is actually the plantar fasciotomy, where we cut the ligament, we release that ligament a little bit just to release the tension. We are not doing that because of the patient's occupation. He's just simply too active and wouldn't be able to uh, to, to rest the foot. Okay, so let's ask that one viewer. Uh, whoever is watching, is it clear? Do we have a clear visual? No answer. Okay. Let's come around. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Excellent. Come around. She said good morning. Good, mo good morning. Good afternoon. Here in Miami. So basically, we've already de uh, demarcated the affected area. We gave the patient a posterior tibial nerve block. There are some other smaller nerves here. We also, that innervate, right, that provides sensation to this area. We've already numbed these as, uh, as well. So the patient's foot, the entire, okay, welcome, super, Australia. Welcome, Australia. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, using a little 25 gauge needle, okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're essentially fenestrating, right? We're fenestrating the plantar fascia, the longest ligament of the foot. And the reason why we're doing this again, even though you, you guys have heard me say in the past, the reason why we do this is because we want, at a cellular level, we want to create injury on purpose. Remember, this is a, a chronic condition, so we want to turn it around into more of a subacute acute condition. This is a phenomenal procedure, absolutely. And, and again, we're not really, we're not really injuring the ligament. We're not. The brain will thank us. Okay, so that's the first part of the procedure. Now, the second part of the procedure, we already isolated. <clears throat> Just to refresh everyone's memory, we've isolated PRP. It's an acronym which stands for platelet-rich plasma. Uh, from a certain amount of blood we're able to isolate. In this case, we went with three cc's of plasma, okay, which m match his beautiful shoes here, right? So in here, what we call liquid gold, a lot of people call it that, in here we have platelets. And platelets play, uh, this is kind of interesting for everyone, 
platelets, the role of the platelets in our bodies is to coagulate, to stop the bleeding. Now, why would these platelets, why are they so special and, you know, in a situation like this, right? The platelets have, even though their major role, their main role is to coagulate, to stop the bleeding, they have a lot of growth factors and they have a lot of proteins and other important cells that aid in the, in the regeneration of damaged tissue and it reduces, these cells reduce inflammation. That's exactly what he has. Why? Because what is plantar fasciitis? It's an inflammation of the longest ligament of the foot. So now I'm going to go ahead and and inject the PRP into... We got 10 viewers. Super. Hello, everyone. Thank you for, for watching. I know it was, it, was, it was very, very short notice, like a 10-minute notice. And this well, is... Hi from Ohio. <laughs> Thank you. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is, and again, I, you know, I, I want to tell all the other subscribers that will eventually find out that we did this without not telling everyone. I apologize in advance, but we're just testing, testing. This is a, a testing video, so to speak. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, come around here. Sorry about that, Wesley. And, you know, and we're going to go ahead and you guys are going to see something. You may see some blanching over here, which means that when the skin turns a little bit, a little bit white. See it here. Come around here. This may seem a little a little bit barbaric, but the patient is numb, as everyone can imagine. How you doing up there, bud? Good. Any pressure? No. Excellent. Any questions from any of our subscribers? Can they actually ask questions, Wesley? Yes, they can, but no questions yet. Okay, super. How come you are putting the needle deep into the foot? That's the first that's a, question. That's an excellent question. That's an excellent question. Um, the plantar fascia runs, okay, it's about right here, and it runs on the bottom of the foot from here all the way to the, to the toes. Um, if you guys look at the, if we come from this angle here, I know exactly where it is. It's about a couple of centimeters, a little bit deeper, but I know exactly where his, where the problem is. We don't want to be in, in, in a level, what we call the subcutaneous tissue. We do not want to be there. Obviously nothing more superficial than that. Then we're in the wrong layer. We're in the wrong spot. And I can actually, there's a lot of, um, in this procedure, I can feel a lot. I can feel if I'm near the ligament, if I touch the ligament. Um, again, going back to the celery-like feeling, okay? This is going to be the last little stick here. And see right there, I can feel, right? I'm about an inch deep. You okay there? You felt that? I apologize. And we're done here. We're done. So just to give everyone an idea... That's how deep we were. Okay. She said it's a little bit blurry and jerky. If it's a little bit blurry, I apologize. Again, that's why we're doing this test and we're working on it with our IT department to make sure that we can get the best uh, Wi-Fi capabilities here so that when we continue to start doing these procedures, then we won't have unhappy subscribers. We want happy subscribers, okay? So I'm just gonna put this down here, okay? So <clears throat> we're all done. Uh, for all of the subscribers that were able to catch uh, this video today, I thank you for, uh, for watching. I would like to thank the patient for allowing us to, to video this, uh, this procedure. Uh, I think a lot of people will definitely benefit uh, from this video. So I thank you. Um, like always, 
www.jawspediatry.com, Instagram, Dr. Toe Jam, Jaws Podiatry, Facebook channel, and last but not least, our YouTube channel, Jaws Healthcare. If you guys have any questions, we're going to, you know, again, we're going to try to really, really make sure that this is uh, when we put up another live video, that we're all, uh, we're all set for that. Okay. Thank you for watching. All right. One more question before we end. Okay. One does, more question. Does the foot need to be massaged to help spread the plasma? That's an excellent question. Another great question. I love questions. So imagine this. Imagine that we have, unlike the knee or the ankle where there's an, an enclosed space and the, and the plasma is not able to move, this area here is not enclosed per se, even though there's a little sac there. It's what we call the infracalcaneal bursa. Imagine you have an orange and you step on the orange. What would happen to the orange juice, right? It'll be kind of just move everywhere. And, and that's not what we want. We want the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma, to stay in the area. That's why we recommend that the patient not walk, try to stay off the foot for a couple of days, and let the, the PRP marinate that area, that, that area that we just treated. Does that answer your question? And another viewer with a great question as well. So they agreed with it. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah. And would it need to be iced? And yes, it was answered. Your okay, question. great. The ice. So the post-procedure protocol now is what we're trying to is create inflammation for the first 48 to 72 hours. That's what the PRP does. The platelet-rich plasma <clears throat> creates inflammation. And not only that, the percutaneous microtonotomy, the needling procedure, also creates trauma. So to answer your question, no anti-inflammatories, no ice. Uh, if anything, a little bit of Tylenol, and that's about it. Patients, uh, historically, they don't suffer a lot of discomfort, maybe just a tiny little bit. It's very tolerable, um, but no anti-inflammatory, no ice. We want that. Essentially, tricking the brain to believe there's a new injury. So we're not, not only are we delivering all these wonderful cells, but the brain itself is actually able to now say, you know what, there's a new injury. Let me take this waterfall of blood and just throw it down there into the foot. So it helps also with the healing process. Okay, guys. Uh, signing off again uh, from all of you guys uh, throughout the entire world, uh, people from all walks of life, from all